Hello everyone. Let's do a transient analysis. This is the same as you do simulation in time domain. And for this one, I decided to use capacitor charging curve. Now, we all know uh, the capacitors, they usually don't conduct DC current. Let me give you a little bit of background on this. So let's assume that our power supply VCC is 5 volts and resistor R1 we will use it as R here and the capacitor C2 we will use it as C. The potential drop across the capacitor is V0, right? So I, therefore I'll put it as VC and then let's try to write the potential VC so by considering this potential divider circuit. So this one we can write VC is equal to VCC that is this voltage minus the potential drop across this resistor which is current to the R I will use IR into the resistance R now the current through R is exactly equal to current through this resistor and for the resistors we know we can write Q equals C is the relationship between charge and voltage and if you differentiate this one with respect to time so dq over dt that is uh, the current and c is a constant so that you can differentiate this one dv over d and vc is the potential drop across the capacitor so minus instead of uh, ir i can write uh, this equation so this is C D V C over D T. So then uh, this equation we can slightly rearrange. So same thing uh, I will rearrange. So I will take D T here. So it's basically D T. So I'm going to integrate both sides. So my T, it goes from 0 to T. Initially, we assume that this capacitor is totally discharged so that there's no voltage. So voltage VC goes from 0 to VC. We do the substitution here now. Now this one we can both sides we can put it as an exponent term e to the power minus t of rc is equal to e to the power but ln is the or the inverse function of the exponent so we can write this as vc minus vcc divided by vcc then we can rearrange this one This is the constant VCC that is 5 volts and by substituting the values we can obtain a value for VC or uh, it's the same as V out that's the voltage at branch. So if we just try to plot this one we would expect something like this. So this is my time axis and this is my voltage axis. So over the time this will be increasing and after that it will reach to a saturation level. So this is uh, VC voltage and in fact we can do a little bit of further math. So we know the term time constant. So when T equals RC, you can see this term become e to the power minus 1. So when you reach that RC time period, this VC voltage is dropped to two-thirds of its original voltage VC max right. so that is what we call the time constant suppose that our capacitor is fully charged to a certain voltage and now uh, we uh, disconnect this one from the VCC and we have connected this to the ground now there is a path to discharge the capacitor for that also we can write uh, the relationship uh, just like the previous case
So then we can integrate uh, both sides. So the T goes from zero to T. At the same time, V goes from, let's say V dash, because it's already charged to a certain voltage VC. It was, uh, originally it was zero. So uh, V dash is actually VCC if, if, if it were charged to that voltage. So if you try to uh, sketch this one, so my, my x-axis is time and y-axis is voltage, VC. So VC voltage, uh, you start, so when T equals zero, you get uh, VCC. So this starts with VCC. And then that is uh, the voltage is decreasing exponential. T equals rc so that is a time constant so what you are getting is one third of the vcc so this one we usually denote as tau the time constant let's try to do a simulation and see whether we can obtain this charging and discharging curves i have already started a project uh, in capture sys and I'm going to place components here. I have all the components but there's one missing part that's the power supply. For this one I'm going to use special power supply called V pulse. So it's a pulse generator. Now if you look at the way it works there are a lot of parameters that you can control the first one is uh, v1 that is the offset voltage so if this is the zero voltage where you want to work so here i want to work with zero volts so this could be something like this then v2 is the uh, peak voltage and uh, everything starts with t that is for time so the de delay time so you can delay this starting so we don't need delay we will use zero there and then rise time so you know that although we write we draw rectangular pulses like this we practically we can't make it they are always there is a small angle there right so the rise time you can control in this module so rise time we will put uh, one nanosecond and fall time also we will put one nanosecond and the pulse width that is the time duration so that we will use as eight milliseconds time period we will pick as 16 milliseconds for this activity now in this circuit, please note that I change capacitor value to one microfarad. Default is usually one nanofarad. And then I'm going to put a probe here. So this is a voltage probe. So I'll put voltage probe here so that I can monitor how voltage is increasing over here. So if needed, I can even monitor how this uh, pulse generator generates voltages as well. Now I'm going to create a simulation profile. I'm going to create new simulation profile. Then the profile type that we need to pick as a time domain or transient analysis. That's the default analysis that we want to do. So if you remember the way that we have picked, so the time period we uh, fix it to 16 milliseconds. So just to uh, show the, the real pictures, I will put maybe 32 milliseconds so that I will we will be able to see two cycles of this one so in fact if doing uh, simulation for 16 millisecond is good enough actually for this case there is an option you can start the project and wait for a while and after that you can start recording data but I'm not going to do that I'm going to start data recording at the beginning and minimum step size that we can define or let the system to decide what's the minimum step size so if you want we can have some sort of small value maybe uh, 0.1 I'll put 0.1 millisecond let's run the simulation and see how the output is and here you can see there are two cycles you, you can see because it, we run it for 32 millisecond time and the red one 
the uh, square pulse that is generated by the signal generator. Now if you want we can uh, use our cursors and do certain measurements. So let me enable cursor. So this is the button to enable cursors. And when I move my mouse pointer you can see uh, the cursor is moving. So the measurements are taken uh, for both red and green curve uh, from this red cursor. So the red cursor value you can see for different different paces been changed and uh, if you want to have another cursor you can use right mouse button so that you are getting another cursor so that you have two cursors to do the measurement and there are cursor moving commands as well so that is what I'm going to use so I'm going to uh, keep my cursor red cursor somewhere here and then I'm going to use this cursor control command I'm going to check the time taken to reach two thirds of the maximum voltage of the green curve. So I'm going to use cursor one. So I'm going to put a command here. Now from the cursors, you can move it here and there and get it done. So let's go and see the, what's the topmost value. So from here, you can read the value. So it is 4.9973 so we can assume that's uh, 5 volts that's maximum value so if it is 5 volts one third of the 5 volt is 1.67 volts right so then we can uh, i'll move cursor back there and i'm going to move cursor towards my right automatically for that i'm going to use a command so this command search command search forward so that means i'm going to move my cursor towards my right and level level is the y-axis level max is the maximum value so that in this case basically it's uh, 5 volts minus 1.67 so that's the level that i want to move it so once i move my cursor from y-axis the maximum minus 1.67 i know for sure uh, if i measure the time that is my time constant i'm getting so see what happens when i click ok my red cursor is moved here so if I want I can put a label here mark label and in the label you can see uh, both X value and Y value uh, and also from here you can see it it is 3.32 that is the Y value and at that time the, the X value is 1.096 milliseconds so at that time you have that is the time constant. Thank you very much and hope you got the idea.